Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Secretary, for being here. Uh, the USDA has proposed several rules that disregard the Packers and Stockyards Act, a well-established precedent set in the eight federal appellate circuits. I have major concerns for my <coughs> constituents about these rules, which the Department has promoted under its competition agenda, which you announced two years ago, uh, were three rules that Congress has historically opposed. Uh, why are these rules not being released altogether? Knowing how closely linked they are, it's nearly impossible to evaluate the impacts of them independently. Well, it, it takes time to formulate them. Um, and I think people are making assumptions about what these rules are or are not. I mean, let's take a look at what we've actually filed. We filed a rule that asked for greater transparency. We think producers ought to be able to know a little bit about who they're doing business with. They ought to know whether or not that integrator is, is financially solvent. Uh, and that's the reason why we put the transparency rule out. Uh, we also think that if there are circumstances where individuals have been retaliated against or discriminated against, that they ought to have a recourse under the Packers and Stockyards to uh, to be able to get uh, some measure of justice. There will be additional rules that we'll continue to be filing, okay. uh, but we're working we're working on them, Congressman. Okay. Well, years ago, similar rules were established to cost that cost the U.S. chicken <coughs> industry alone over $1.4 billion in the first few years of implementation. Uh, the department is now estimating these rules to cost pennies on the dollar. Uh, why is your estimate so low, and why wasn't a thorough economic analysis included? A thorough economic analysis has been included. It doesn't cost a great deal to ask people for greater transparency. How could legal costs and potential lawsuits not be included in any of the cost estimates? Well, I you know there it will be. Actually, we have some of the major uh, chicken uh, processing companies agreeing to uh, – to these provisions. Uh, Cargill uh, recently in their merger agreed to embrace this and I think we just recently had another major poultry uh, processing company say, say we're all for the transparency. We understand why you're asking for it. Um, avian influenza is impacting the poultry industry in many parts of the country and as a result increasing prices Americans are paying at the grocery store for uh, eggs. And uh, How is USDA assisting poultry producers to ensure that they have the resources they need to respond to disease threats like avian influenza and recover their operations in the instance they must depopulate their flock. We, we've allocated initially $800 million from the Commodity Credit Corporation. Those resources are being used first uh, to uh, aid in the detection of high path avian influenza. Secondly, uh, to be able to assist farmers in depopulating uh, their flocks and disposing of them properly. Uh, and third, uh, basically providing for cleanup services uh, to decontaminate uh, the facilities and then to uh, provide some indemnity for the birds that have been lost so that farmers can get back in business as quickly as possible. Uh, my, many parts of my district, the 6th District of Virginia, are very rural and uh, do not have adequate broadband service, do not have any broadband service. So I want to follow up on Mr. Molinar's question. Um, the, the current round four of ReConnect allows funding to go to areas that have broadband service uh, below 120 to 20 speeds, uh, but apparently you're supporting using ReConnect funding to increase speeds of existing networks instead of funding construction where no networks currently exist. Uh, will you commit to uh, us that unserved areas remain the top priority for ReConnect funding? Unserved has an interesting definition in the connection of the ReConnect program. Unserved means uh, uh, facilities that are currently uh, like DSL. Uh, th that is an area that has DSL is considered to be unserved because the download and upload speeds are, are, are fairly slow. The portion and Congress has directed us to focus on those areas with the, with the ReConnect program. It's the FCC and the Commerce Department that is responding to the unserved areas as you've defined it. Okay. And that's why they want to work with the states. That's why they need mapping. They need to know exactly what we're doing first so that they know where, where we're working, okay. where there's service. So it's going to happen, sir. It's, it's, but it's not, it's not in our purview to do this. It's the Commerce Department and the FCC. Thank you. I, I yield my remaining time to the chairman.